I'll do the honors, Henry. Rack upon ruin. The way these tricky Frenchmen overmatch us, they must have sold their souls to the devil. And that one's the very devil himself. Oh, oh, brother, so you've changed your tune. Yesterday, you'd sell your sister to the French. Only to get you a royal husband. And don't brother and sister me at a time like this. Look, you, ye beef-eating, muscle-bound, flat-footed bunglers. How dare you call yourselves Englishmen? Is there no one here who can throw me that arrogant Frenchman? Well! I would try, Your Grace. Who is that fellow? A newcomer, my lord, late returned from our foreign wars. What do you know of him? His name is Brandon. He's a gentleman, sir, though without title. Title be hang. Can he wrestle? That I know not. Hmm. Why not call upon my lord of Buckingham? He could humble the Frenchman. That is, if he'd hazard his finery. With pleasure, my lady. We thank you, Master Brandon. But first, the Duke of Buckingham will try a fall. It's catch as catch can, my lord, so watch out for his feet. He broke Courtney's neck with him. could have won for you. So do I. And yet, I wonder how he would fare against Buckingham. My Lord Duke, would you care to challenge Master Brandon to a fall? If it please your grace. Should I? But it's heathen cruel. As you first proposed it, you wanted to see a Christian thrown to the lion. Trance you at cards. Your Christian bought himself right manfully. He'd make a handsome captain of the guard. No doubt he would, but were I to make him such, you'd drive him from the court. Why so? Because I like him. And if I liked him not, you'd fall in love with him. If you think me so perverse, why don't you try hating old King Louis of France? Very well, then. I'll despise him. Why, then I'll hate him, too. You scheming little wench. But you'll marry him nonetheless. And I already have guardsmen aplenty. Will I ever learn not to match wits with our king? Brandon, can this be you? By Jove, you do make a handsome captain of the guard. 
I, I feel more like a pouter pigeon. Hey, you're a brave adornment to the House of Tudor. Uh, an honor I did not seek. My mind was set on fortune in the New World. I merely wished to visit our English court until a ship came in at Bristol. Why go chasing halfway across the world? Dame Fortune's an unpredictable wench. She may be waiting for you right here. She may well have passed me by, deeming me naught but a, a monkey in a red coat. <laughs> Dame Fortune always knows a soldier. The Queen is less perceptive. It seems her highness mistakes me for an elder page. She's charged me to deliver a message to the Princess Mary. Well, that's no unpleasant duty. I pray you help me find her. The Princess is with her ladies in the lower gardens. Thank you, sir. And Brandon. Don't fall in love with her. I didn't leave my wits abroad. Ah, but you haven't met my Lady Mary. Ah, uh, will I be blinded at the sight of her? Most men are. Thank you, sir. But have no fear. We guardsmen never look above us. the honor to find the Princess Mary among you. Oh. Oh. Is the Princess Mary a person of so little consequence that she is not known to a mighty captain of the guard? <laughs> Pray forgive a blundering stranger at the court. Since Princess Mary is reputed to be gracious, I presume she cannot be here. the Princess Mary. If you have a message, Captain, deliver it. Will your ladyship inform the Princess that Her Highness the Queen awaits her coming in the estate chamber? like a man. Oh. Was that fellow being troublesome? No, my lord. He did but bring a message from the queen. What does that Spanish woman want of you? I do not know, but as I'm compelled to do her bidding, the game goes to you by default. <laughs> I'd not win that way. There's only one game I would win from you. Oh, pray you, sir. No more wooing. You waste your eloquence. Very well, my lady. Since eloquence is denied me, I'll use logic. Would you prefer King Louis for a husband? So you would win by default. It is no laughing matter. I have no fear of Henry. Nor would it be the first time he's tried to trade me off. It may be the last. The king has already sent his Lord Chancellor to France to conclude a treaty. He ought to be part of the bargain. And you would dare oppose the king in this? My lady, as Lord High Constable of England, I am master of the tower. And he who commands the tower commands London. And maybe the kingdom? Dangerous words for the proud Plantagenet Duke. I pray you do not voice such thoughts to Henry. I do not covet Henry's throne, nor would I cross him. But if it would serve your need, I'd risk my head. Dear, kind Buckingham, I wish I could say yes. But since my heart won't let me, will you still remain my friend? I will. When the Princess Mary addresses me in public, could she not find a term of greater deference? I paid your highness the compliment of calling you my brother's wife. I shall not presume upon the intimacy again. Thank you. And did your grace command me here to tell me this? I am concerned about your May Day ball. Oh? It has come to my attention that Sir Anthony Denny Sir Thomas Lovell, Griffith, and others have as yet received no invitation. True, Your Highness. And why not? 
I have not as yet made out the list. But now that the royal favorites have been singled out, I will give their names my careful consideration. May it please the Queen's grace. Sir Edwin. Good Sir Edwin, will our master of the revels prepare a list of invitations for my ball? I will, my lady. The usual selection. A new face or two might make a pleasing diversion. A real break with tradition, my lady. Say, a captain of the guard. To add a martial flavor. I doubt if the rowdy fellow knows how to dance. I'll wager ten crowns he can. Strike on it. Supposing we settle it tonight, if you brought him privately, we could try out his step in my drawing room. Excellent, my lady. In matters of this kind, it's always best to observe the fellow at close range. <laughs> by ten crowns. Will the princess forgive my rudeness as a messenger? It's I who was wrong. You could not have known me. I knew you. Then I think you're a very bold man. And a very good dancer. He spoke too soon. I've half forgotten the step. Had you no time between wars for dancing with the French and Spanish ladies? On occasion, but hardly la Galliarda. What did they dance? I nothing but la Volta. Oh, then I must learn it. What shall the tune be? Can you play a Coranto? Well, it's much too difficult for me. Let me try it. has its bounds. I beg your pardon? Would you turn our dancing floor into a wrestling paddock? On the contrary, my lady. La Volta has found favor among ladies and gentlemen of both the French and Spanish courts. But is that really the way you dance it? With your arm around her... their waist? Well, I should not have dared to have ventured upon such a familiarity otherwise. Did you say the French court? Then, as master of the revels, I should see more of this dance. If the princess would be so indulgent, might not the Lady Margaret... My lady has no objection. None whatever. Oh! <laughs> Sir Edwin, do you think me a prude? Nay, indeed. here as a guardsman. As a gentleman. Then I must ask you to leave as a gentleman. This is not a common rebel. Did you hear me, fellow? My well, lord, you should know better than to draw your sword in the palace. As captain of the guard, I have a mind to clap you in the gatehouse. My lord, you Master Brandon did not thrust his way in here but came at the personal invitation of the princess. Pray excuse us. It was well you took it by surprise. The Duke's the deadliest swordsman in the kingdom. The Italian dueling masters taught me a trick or two. Room, room, room for the King's grace.
princess ready to choose her partner for the honor of the opening dance? Are the musicians weary? I ordered the music stopped. We cannot permit such an indecent exhibition. If your highness does not like the way we do and dance at my ball, you may retire as soon as you see fit. Will the king permit me to be insulted thus? I told you she had sharp claws. Shall I not have what music and dances I like at my own ball? That you shall, sister mine. Come, let the music knock it. We'll learn the step ourselves, and where you ladies out of dancing, too. Master Brandon taught you this dance, didn't he? Yes, brother. For mirth and play, that fellow has no equal. Pity he's only a commoner. <laughs> Thank you. 
more than your share today, my beauty. She has flown enough. It is time we tried the crossbow. by Dick practice archery. Ready your bow. You too, Brandon. Fit in the dogs. Ho ho ho! Well aimed, well, 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 I was but following the royal example. <laughs> as the horse can well bear. It's loose, I say. rescue at all. It was a guardsman's duty to watch over the royal princess. A duty you've been neglecting of late. The king has kept us busy with the hunt. The while our summer beauties are left to wither and die. Did you never gather a nosegay for a lady? Never, Your Grace. Then it's time you did. It is my royal command. While you're about it, I'd have you compose me a sonnet. A sonnet? But I would not dare. Can this be the bold Charles Brandon? Were I a better poet, and you perchance a burgher's daughter, I might be tempted. Pretend I am a burgher's daughter. Oh, please, sir, will you try? By royal command? And sovereign decree.
Oh, Mary mine, wert thou a burgher's daughter, in thy fair self in every other way, I'd take thee with me o'er the perilous water to the new world, where none could say us nay. Oh, Mary mine, sole mistress of my heart, fair jewel star set in the heaven above, thou art a princess in a world apart of castles, diadems, and of courtly love beyond my dreams. For kings will give thee gold, and princes bring thee gems from distant lands. The only wealth that I may ever hold are these fair flowers for thy maiden hands. Yet fragrant they'll remain and richly green if they're remembered by a golden queen. Oh, Charles. How can you be so cruel? In order to be kind. Is it kind to throw my royal station in my face? You must not forget it, my lady. I would if you would let me. Help me, Charles. My lady, I beg of you. Am I a statue on a pedestal? If I would have told knighthood upon Charles Brandon. A man of parts and quite deserving, no doubt. No doubt at all. If you did bestow knighthood upon Charles Brandon, I'm sure the Princess Mary would be overjoyed. What? Fiddle faddle. That's the general epidemic as far as she's concerned. Every man at court's been struck. But has the Lady Mary herself ever been smitten before? No, by Lucifer she hasn't. Your Highness, my Lord Chancellor and the ambassadors from France beg audience with your grace. Send them in. King Louis must have come to terms. It's the physician to cure my little sister. Oh, Mary mine, sole mistress of my heart. How does it go, Charles, the part about the star? Oh, I've forgotten, my lady. Then you shall make me another verse tomorrow. Au revoir. Goodbye, my lady. My name is Mary. Princess Mary. Conclusion, Your Grace, His Most Puissant Majesty Louis XII would signalize the alliance and guarantee everlasting peace and amity between England and France by taking unto himself in marriage the king's own sister, the Princess Mary Tudor. It likes us well, this loving offer from our dear brother of France. And how much English gold does he want to sweeten the bargain? My most gracious master wishes it understood that the matter of dowry is of secondary importance. The person of the princess seen by him only on this painted medallion bespeaks a maiden of so marked and gentle nature that our king already anticipates her love much. Then you'll forego the dowry. Not quite, Your Grace. The sum of half a million crowns has been proposed. Half a million? Odds death, my 
does that old usurer ask me to melt down my crown? <laughs> Give me leave, good friends of France. A word to my council first. My lords, I'm no huckster and no haggler. Let's not the old goat face half of what he asks and see if he'll accept it. I bargained with Louis for days, sire. 400,000 is the very least they will consider. Even so, they wish the world to believe the sum a half a million. Let the world leave the sum a billion, so be it we save a fifth of the gold. I propose we raise the full 500,000 crowns. What? Uh, give them their 400,000. And put the odd 100,000 in your own private coffers, my king. Ah. Well hit, my Lord Chancellor. So you, Ned. Our English citizens might prefer to see their princess wedded to an English lord. Whose sister is she? Theirs or mine? By my faith, Ned, I'm all amazement. Would you deny me a paltry 100,000 crowns? Nay, not so, sir. Then you shall raise the money. Our citizens of London will listen to you. Me, my lord king. I take it up with the mayor and corporation. They'll kick like mules at such attacks. Why did I make you my lord high constable? If they refuse, clap them in the tower. That'll make them disgorge. And the lesser rogues will follow their example. It is settled, sir. Wolsey will disclose the final terms of the agreement. Merci, sire. And now, if I may wait upon the princess, I have gifts from my royal master. Poor though they be, they will serve to exhibit his love and esteem. Sir John, go to the Princess Mary and bring her to us straight. Thank you. Meg, I may as well tell you that I am mightily displeased. A princess is not entitled to much privacy, I know, but certain things cannot be shared with a prying, meddlesome Abigail. I quite understand, my lady. When a princess stoops to pursue a commoner, she must indeed want privacy. But what about the commoner? Would you put his neck in jeopardy for the sake of a springtime dalliance? Dalliance? I pray it is no more. And what if it is? And God defend you both. Yes? With license of your highness, the king commands you to the royal presence. Uh, the French ambassador would offer his devoir. Inform the king that I am not disposed to come. I will convey your apologies to his grace and... No apologies, just say that I will not come. Milady, you were born to marry royally. The king will see that you do. It's time that you all understood that Mary Tudor will marry a beggar if she chooses. Your Grace, Milich, the princess wishes me to come. Priscilla, convey. speak up. She says she will not come. What? Is this an answer? Am I to be flouted under my own roof, defied by this titmouse? Oh. Aunt Thunder, if she'll not wait upon us, we'll wait upon her. Where is she? My lady is indisposed. Mary! Yes? Come forth and receive the ambassadors of France. I command you! You hear? Yes, brother dear. Are you coming? Well met, brother. Come in, gentlemen. I will arise at once and receive you all informally. Cover yourself, hussy! 
Oh, nay, brother, when the king commands, I must obey. Milady! General, that jolt head would have made had she only been a man. My Lord King. Huh? A word with you alone, sire. Hmm? We must forgive the Lady Mary, my lords. The sudden shock of great events has quite disordered the delicate maiden balance of her mind. Let us to our palace at Greenwich and leave the princess to the quiet of Windsor. I can assure you, as when next we see her, she will have remembered the manifold gifts and kindnesses she has received from an indulgent brother. And the duty she owes our royal person. Come, let's to Greenwich straight. They've departed. Send word to Charles Brandon. Tell him to meet me in the library presently. Lady, I beg you not to continue in this madness. The king will have his way in the end. Not if I make haste. Mary. Milady. If you won't serve me, find me a page. You know I will do your bidding. <laughs> Charles Brand. He resigned his place at court and is off to Bristol, there to take ship for the new world. Without a word of goodbye. And I thought his mention of the new world mere poetry. It was a decision he could not have made lightly. Well met, sister. Good, Herr de Longueville. Permit me, most gracious princess, that I may have the honor, on behalf of King Louis, to offer this little testament of his admiration and love. This is my answer, sir. Go home and tell your silly old master that it is thus I regard his suit. Let me pass. By the soul of my father and holy church, you'll marry Louis of France within a fortnight or I'll have you whipped to death on Smithfield Pillory. You horse. Captain. Thank you, sir. You'll find your quarters of the very best, sir. Now, if you'll just whistle up a good westerly wind, come 50 days, I'll have you in the new world. And if we get the breeze, when do we sail? Oh, on the first tide, sir. We'll send a boat ashore for you all in good time. There's no hurrying the tide. I'll warrant you a good five hours before yon ship weighs anchor. Be at your ease now, sir, and drink your morning beaver. Charles. Lady Mary. Are 
you alone, my lady? I've run away. You must be mad. A princess cannot run away. How many hours of grace do you think you'll have before the king's officers catch up with you? No one saw me leave, not even Lady Margaret. And long before I can be apprehended, you and I will be on our way to the new world. It's out of the question. How can you say that? Perhaps you do not feel about me as I do about you. I wish it were as simple as that. But the fates are against us. As yet, no sailing master will permit a woman on so long and perilous a voyage. All that I know. But any gentleman may take his page along. You would hazard this for me. Bridges are too short. Untrust your points. Now let's see you walk. <laughs> Don't overdo it. That's better. Now you must not smile. You're far too beautiful when you smile. Oh, Charles. Now, scowl. That ship's master's no fool. Yeah, boy, my sword. Now, fall in behind me. Help you out of the doorway, sir. No, by thunder. Come on, Pardon, Master. I forgot myself. Very well, then. But I'll cuff you if you do it again. Does he suspect? No. But I'll feel safer once we're out of Bristol Harbor. Of course, he must never know that you're a princess. I think we may count on this. Should he discover that you're a woman once we're out to sea, he'll come to terms rather than put back. Very well, then. I'll not show my face outside this cabin. We anchor! Oh, let me do it. I must learn. We're moving. Oh, Charles. Captain's respect, sir. All hands on deck to drink a round to the voyage. You stay here in the cabin. I'll do the honors for both of us. Rose out, she lovers! Here's your wine, sir. Where's your page, Master Brandon? All must drink, sir. We'll have no jewelers aboard. Now the poor lad's under the weather. Sick, is he? Well, sick or not, let's have him out here. I'll fetch him. A pint of wine will do him more good than a drench. <laughs> Ball. 
and a drink for you, sir. Now then, bon adventure. Hold there, young fella. Would you slight an old custom and put a hex upon our voyage? Come, lad, you're no better than your master. Chuck your hat over. Bilgin Bedlam, tis a wench. A pretty lad. <laughs> Set the sails aback. Pull up the longboat. Aye, aye, sir. So you'd sail under false colors, would you? Why, with a woman aboard my ship, we'd be at the bottom of Davy Jones's locker before we're halfway down the channel. Here's your passage money. Put them ashore. Brandon, I arrest you in the King's name for high treason. I'm charged to convey you to the Tower of London. Your Royal Highness will accompany me to the Royal Palace at Greenwich. A private word with Master Brandon first. Do not despair, Charles. You will not languish in the Tower. So long as I live, my thoughts will be of you. I know my brother, Henry. Once he's shouted himself hoarse, he will be reasonable enough. Goodbye. You and I will be together within a week, or my name is not Mary Tudor. Nor can it be otherwise, until I add the name of Brandon. Hi, Lord Cardinal. Good morning. And to you, Ned. God save your grace. My liege, I thank you. What's the business? The matter of Charles Brandon. That traitor! Since the abduction of a princess is an act of high treason, a warrant has been drawn up for his execution. Your Grace, Her Highness the Princess Mary has arrived and begs an audience. She does, does she? Tell the wanton shameless drab she needn't show her face to me. Oh! Have her in. We'll receive her. I hope I find you well, brother. Well enough. I see you're blooming. Nothing like a sea voyage to put a glow in a maiden's cheek. Brother, what I have to say would be better said in private. I've no secret from my counselors. Well? I am here, not on my own behalf, but to speak for Charles Brandon. His arrest is unjustified. No doubt of it. A mere matter of high treason. Causing trouble between England and France. And compromising the king's sister as a common jade. He did nothing of the kind. You may accuse me of indiscretion, but nothing more. Thanks to Charles Brandon. Hmm. Will you attend the rites tomorrow? Do not fail to convey our gratitude to Master Brandon. Do you intend to stretch his neck or shorten him? A prisoner of such consequence deserves the dignity of the ceremonial axe. He does indeed. You mean he must suffer death? It's the usual result when the head is separated from the body. If there is any guilt, it is mine. 
Charles Brandon did not offer to take me to the New World. I forced myself upon him. If you were determined to punish someone, punish me. Your pleading comes too late. The warrant's signed. Please, my brother, spare him. And I will do anything you ask. Will you marry Louis of France? Yes. Even that. I wonder, Your Grace, if it would be wise. Eh? Might she not endanger our treaty, being at best an unwilling wife? Our relations with France are in delicate balance. Dare we run the risk of further insults flung in the faces of those we would embrace as friends? My liege, if I may make so bold. Tis said that when the Lady April mates with December, she is looking forward to a warm July. So, my lord, with the Princess Mary, Louis is old. It will be a world's wonder if he lasts a twelve month. Now, might not the lady behave more dutifully in France if the choice of a second husband could be her own? Well and good. You have our promise. Anyone I may choose? Even the devil himself. So be it you hurl no coronets while Louis lives. And now, will my dear kind brother let an innocent man out of the tower? No. We will release the prisoner when you've proven yourself a queen. But one more trick, even an interchange of letters between you and that fellow. Inform the French ambassador the marriage can go forward. And now, if you please, my lord. Bless you, my daughter. With all my heart. I have but one consolation. That Charles Brandon is your prisoner. And since I cannot go to him, will you tell him of my bargain with the king? I will. My truest friend. And most devoted. Today we have added to our fleur de lis this loveliest English rose. Ye noble knights, come, pledge with me your love. The Queen of France. Cousin Francois, since my queen is a stranger among us, a pleasant labor falls to your lot. Our Dauphin and my heir, I appoint you and the Princess Claude, your wife, as guides and governors in all matters that should concern a Queen of France. You shall find me ever willing, sovereign lady. You are quiet, Marie. And you neither eat nor drink. This kingdom of France quite overwhelms me. So it must, my love. But soon, I will take you away from all these staring faces. We will be alone together. Not so, Majesty. Our guests have come to honor us. If I seem to mope, do not indulge me. But rather, 
Show me my duty. Show them your duty. Me, your love. As your physician, I beg of you that in consideration of your delicate health... Listen, old pills and plasters. It was I got married today. Not you. <laughs> Sovereign lady. Red wine of Burgundy to serve the need of our most beautiful queen. Thank you. Please accept another one. Merely to watch such loveliness waste her warm lips upon the cold glass has quite intoxicated me. Pray keep your compliments for she who has a right to them. Who would live by candlelight once he has seen the sun? Your Highness, that under the circumstances, I must be in personal attendance upon His Majesty throughout the entire night. I quite understand. finally condescended to pay me a visit. What has prompted this extraordinary honor? A promise I made to Her Royal Majesty, the Queen of France. She that was Mary Tudor and is now the bride of King Louis XII. You find that hard to believe? I do. What boundless simplicity. Are you Dolt enough to imagine that because a princess had a last fling with you that she'd marry a commoner. Oh, she wept, I'll admit. And before she accepted the crown of France and the jewels and the silken gowns, she had an hour's remorse of you. In fact, she wrung a promise from me since she could not move the king on your behalf. It was her wish, no doubt, to still her conscience that you'll be allowed to pursue your interrupted journey to the new world. Most thoughtful of her. And you'll take it on yourself to release me? Not openly, no. I dare not risk the king's displeasure, however much I may desire to oblige the exalted Queen of France. But an escape might be arranged.
Is the king ready? His majesty is now being elevated, your grace. in the ballroom, dancing the night away. The hours fleet so swiftly when I'm dancing with my king. Mm -hmm. I like this gay life, too. I have never felt younger. <laughs> but when will we be alone together? We're alone together now. Well, yes. But always in sight of others. Others? I can see no others when I'm with my king. Have I ever told you how gallant and commanding you look astride a horse? How dashing. le roi Salitier. At last, I have caught up with the queen of my heart. Your queen prefers to ride with her king. <laughs> Impossible. Be not dismayed, madame. Life will not always pass you by. One day you will have a real king for your husband. Never. Nor are you worthy to be king. <laughs> worthy or no, you will soon make me one. Each morning, I think, she will put an end to that weak old man today. Ah, to pass, to last, to cast. And why? As you English say, the pace that kills. to disturb him now. I will keep you informed. Margaret. I want you to go on a mission to England. At once. Arrange for Sir Edwin to accompany you. And leave you here alone. King Louis is dying, Margaret. He may not last the day out. When he is gone, you know what lies in store for me. Dispatch you now to London in all haste and seek out my trusted friend, the Duke of Buckingham at the Tower. Milady has kept the terms of her agreement. She would have her brother keep his. And now that the French marriage is ended, she begs you to exert your influence with King Henry. Urge him to release Charles Brandon from the Tower and send him straight to France. 
Would that I might. My lord. Charles Brandon attempted a foolish escape and was killed by the guards. His body lies at the bottom of the Thames. Poor, helpless man. And my lady, my poor dear Mary, what will become of her now? We must seek the king without delay. You cannot. His grace is in the North Country. Every moment increases the danger for Mary. Francis will scarce be crowned before he forces himself upon her. Then I myself shall go to France at once. Tell Henry when he returns, his sister's plight was such that I took it upon myself to serve as his ambassador. Your master, would you be Sir Edwin Caskerton? I am. It's been a main hard task searching you out, sir, among the high roads and by roads and the little small lanes of London. Day after day, I've watched and asked and waited for you till I fair forgot me gainful occupation of selling costal apples. Thank you, sir. And God bless you, sir. Do you know where the man who wrote this letter is lodged? <laughs> lodged is the grand word, indeed. Me pigs lie better than that poor gentleman. Can you take us to him? I can, sir. Though the sight of so fine a lady on Bankside might might draw attention, as you might say. Wept, we'd better go unnoticed. I'll go on to Greenwich and await you there. I pray it is true. <laughs> Majesty, His Grace the Duke of Buckingham. My counselors inform me that my dear brother of England wants his sister back. He does, Your Majesty. And I want her to remain here, in France. I shall make her my queen. But what if Your Majesty's present wife? The kingdom comes first. Indeed, my mind is so set upon an alliance with England that I must harrow my heart and set aside my dear wife, Claude. I know my master, sire. Henry of England will never agree. <laughs> I know him too. How vexed he was at the exorbitant sum he sent to France for Marie Tudor's dowry. But I would ease his mind and gladden his heart. Already I have dispatched my ambassador to restore the full sum to his royal coffers in lieu of his fair sister. Has the Lady Mary been told of this? The matter does not concern her as yet. I would speak with her. My lord, you waste your time. I have my orders. My coach leaves Paris at noon. I expect Mary Tudor to be in it. Even though you take her home, Henry will send her back to me. That's for Henry to decide. Très bien. L'entretien est terminé. Duprat! My dear, dear friend, again you have rescued me. Was there ever another such as you? And now tell me what I want to know. What would you hear first? About Charles Brandon, of course. What is it? Would, would the king not let him leave the tower? He left it. But in the dead of night, the guards knowing only that he was an escaping prisoner. Why did he do it? My dear, he was a most adventurous man. So restless a spirit could never be imprisoned.
There she is, buying Buckingham's flag. They're awaiting his return. We could waylay him on the road from Paris to Calais. I'd rather seek him out than wait in ambush. Church at Vimeel. You almost slept the clock round. While they're changing horses, you shall have some refreshment. I could not eat. You must. Come, Father Pierre is noted for his hospitality. Life should seem better on a fine morning like this. And you have a long life ahead of you, Mary. Are you strong enough to face another dilemma, almost as intolerable as the first? I'll face it better in England. You may not remain in England unless we solve it now. It wasn't easy to free you from King Francis. He let you go only because he's certain to have you back. Never. He's already sent to Henry the full amount of the diary you brought Louis. With it, he hopes to buy you for himself. Henry will refuse it. 400,000 crowns. And all for his private coffers. He promised me my choice of a second husband. You heard him. It was you who proposed it. Thank God I did. You and I shall hold him to that promise. We've only to step into that little church and Father Pierre will marry us. Then you need fear no king on either side of the water. No one can take the place of Charles Brandon. I will not be demanding. I will respect your grief. Then remain my friend. Please do not talk of love again. Ever. Don't touch me. You were less squeamish with Charles Brandon. Am I so low and loathsome? The blood of Plantagenet kings flows in my veins, you brat of a Welsh farmer. <laughs> You'll have me, madam, or I'll take you straightway back to King Francis. <laughs> Charles! The foremost knight and first swordsman of England forgot that killing never thrives by proxy. Start ahead with Sir Edward. Will you let me draw? Did you let me? I do not cross swords save with an equal. But I would make you the exception. Thank you, my lord, Duke. Once I've seen my lady safe, I shall accept with pleasure.
got her highness with them. Come on, lads. Hold them off until I get Mary aboard the lugger. Have at them! that it's not all brawn and hewing that makes a swordsman, but the parry and thrust. You need two hands for this game. brother. It's just the sight of your good English face. Ah, uh, enough of this. You've no cause for such display. No cause? Do you know what I've suffered at the court of France? The vile insults I've endured from that licentious dauphin now puffed up into a king. You could not dream of the contempt in which he holds your royal person, nor his palpable scorn of our island kingdom, headed by the prince of usurers. How now, my lord? Think you to bribe the king of England like some house lackey or common scullion? Permit me, sovereign lady. I do but bear a gift of treasure from his majesty King Francis, who begs of you to make him your husband. I already have a husband. 
Brandon! I thought you were dead. A false impression created by the Duke of Buckingham, Your Highness. Buckingham? Where is Buckingham? Your Grace, I know something of this matter. Sir Edwin bears witness that the Duke of Buckingham played the assassin and dares not show his face in England. We'll deal with him hereafter. With you, Charles Brandon, now. Come here, sir. How dare you marry into the royal house without our consent? It was with your consent, my king. I had your plighted word given before our eminent cardinal that I might choose a second time as my heart led me. Only forgive my widow's sensibility that shunned the royal pomp and public show attendant on a second wedding and chose instead a simple service at a quiet church in Dover. You modest violet. You shrinking, blushful daisy. Pray take the gold away and tell your wicked master that the King of England is not yet so mean that he would sell his sister into slavery. Mary! Forgive my lady wife, sire, if sometimes she is forward and forgets herself. The gold is not yours to accept or refuse. It was given to the king. Forgive her, too, for her unseemly words against the generous king of France, who, out of his largesse, has sent your royal person this pledge of his affection. Should you not consider it, sire, like the Lady Mary herself, as a loan repaid? Mais, sire, il me faut consulter mon... Rather than be thought churlish or ungentle, we will accept the gold. Convey to our dear brother of France our heartfelt thanks. We cry you mercy. Here we recovered our sister and gained a newfound brother. And now we would be alone. Charles, we owe you much. What do you want? Oh, I have all I want. I haven't. He'd make a handsome Duke of Suffolk. Mm. Yeah? Yes, I'll make him Duke of Suffolk. Thank you, brother. No! I earned that money. It was given to me. Hey, Charles! The title alone will not feed us. Very well. I'll give you 20 manors and their rents to gild the title. Brother, my own dear... No! No more! The Duke demand 20 manors on one condition. That you take this plaguey, conniving little baggage down to Suffolk and keep her there. If she remains at court, she'll wheedle my ears from me. And Charles, beat her thrice a day. <laughs> and now, sir, how dare you take me to task in front of the entire court? I love you. <laughs>